interested in the points of view of the, of the artists and how they processed this kind of information that the scientists had. You know, I, I love telling people you can go outside on a sunny day here in Southern California, we have plenty of those, and you can actually feel where the sun is in the sky. You know, we, our, our heat sensors on our skin are sensitive enough to feel the sun. And then you say, what we're trying to do is literally feel the heat from a galaxy on the other side of the universe. So this data comes in, and then the scientists have to kind of make an, an ana analogical relationship between the data and something we could see visually. So they have to kind of compress it into visual colors and then represent it so we get to look at it. Well, that's just a big translation right there. And that's, from my vantage point, a lot of my work is about the kind of the awkwardness of communication. I've learned a lot. And one of the things I've learned is that space is endless. Even though it is finite, uh, it, it, it seems to be endless. And so no matter uh, how much data has been collected with, with this telescope in the last uh, six years, there's still endless amounts of space. And through the research that, that Spitzer is doing, I, I, it just feels like I'm, I can sense myself out, way out in time space. So that's the inspiration. It's just really fascinating to look at something that everything is at a different point in time, and it's not now, it's in the past. I think it's intriguing that it's titled Observe because that is what I believe artists and science, scientists share. It's also revolutionary and it has so much impact. It's not just about seeing something that explodes in the cosmos or exploded 400 years ago. It's the fact that we can see something that happened 400 years ago looking into the past and that there might be multiple dimensions surrounding us that we can't sense. Uh, and the fact that the camera sees in the infrared, which is a non-physical spectrum, so it sees things that we can't see. And all of that's very interesting to artists. And a lot of that came out in those, in those conversations. The image will be um, projected on the right side. And you can see this image, and you can see that it has curves in it. And, and basically I'm using a panoramic stitching software that was developed by a PhD student. Okay. I was just saying that uh, you probably have some leeway as an artist depending on the projection of the sky that you use. You know, your image of the, of the whole sky. Um, using different projections will get the laser to follow different paths and different shapes. So you can probably choose which one you think is a, a more artistically interesting. You know, we, we can sort of provide you with different projections you'll be able to use. So we can go look at the star and say, at this phase of its life, it looks like it's doing this. And then we can go over here and look at this star, and it looks different, right? And we can say, oh, that's at a different phase of its life. Yes. And uh, I'm really, really excited about this collaboration in that, I mean, all of you, every time I've, I've come here at all the meetings, there's such great energy. And looking at the kind of work that you do is just so so, so amazing, so important. And our main mission is either ramping down, it's one of the reasons why we really want to feature the incredible science we've done. Um, there's so many varied things that Spitzer does. It looks at the universe in heat light, infrared light, so it's not a wavelength we see at all. So one of the most wonderful things about our images is that anything you see from a telescope is not the way the human eye would see it. Most of the things are entirely invisible to the human eye. So we look at everything from uh, it's particularly good at watching stars and planets be born because they're born inside these giant clouds of dust and gas that are so thick we can't see through them. All the light is absorbed. So it's a wonderful instrument for actually witnessing the moment of the birth of a star in the solar system. How do you find a metaphor to describe what it's like for our brains to, to grasp the idea of an infinite number of Right. You know, I mean, the brain of an ant is an incredible thing. It has no idea what Michelangelo is, what a cathedral is, what a particle collider is. You know, we are probably in a similar state of evolution where we just simply can't understand now some of the things we're starting to observe. I mean, you watch an ant crawl into a particle collider, you can say, okay, we're in the same place. <laughs> the ant is somewhat aware of a particle collider. But, you know, we have another leap 
probably to understand what the universe is now presenting us with. Our right. human brains just aren't going to do it. Right. And, and that's where metaphor and the power of observation come together so we can start exploring this new realm. How to place oneself, like each individual being, in relationship to, let's say, the stars, so that if, if let's say, there is an object right in front of you and you know that it's placed there to be in alignment to a particular star above at a particular time, that, that connects you, it, it, it gives you a sense of connection to the motion that, that our planet is going through, that our solar system is going through. We're more like anthropologists than we are like any of the other hard sciences because they essentially are looking at data and trying to extrapolate some theories based on you know, trends within the data. They can't do any tests, they can't do any, um, they can't, they don't have control groups. They can't actually alter the data to find out what that does to things. So in a way, they're just looking at this data and trying to figure it out. And in a way, that's kind of what, what, what an artist does as well. You have an idea, you look at this data and you try to, or, or vice versa, you look at the world, which we could consider data, and then try to extrapolate some um, either theory or something that would jar the theories that we have about the world and then present that.
approach what they do through reason, and artists approach what they do through sort of an intuition. And I think, in, in fact, uh, they both work in those worlds. I mean, scientists do use intuition a lot. They have hunches. They, they go on those hunches. And vice versa, I think artists deal a lot with reason and, and, and logic in, in, in their work. Uh, but it is this ancient dualism, you know, this art and science is left, what we now call left brain, right brain, but the conversation between uh, intuition and, and reason. So perception and, versus reality. Reality is just a slippery concept in general, and they would be the first ones to, to say that that's the case. Thank you.